Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan, and recently we did a video taking a look at the 10 most populated planets in the Outer Rim. Aside from a few exceptions like Korriban, most of the population centers in the peripherals of the galaxy were located on the major trade routes, arteries on the blood vessels that supply the galaxy with everything it needs to stay healthy and vibrant. Today we'll be moving on to the core regions of the galaxy to take a look at the most populated planets. Many of these worlds also happen to be some of the most ancient in the galaxy with history spanning back to the very first days of the Old Republic and beyond. Many of these planets are going to be from the deep lore and you might have never heard of them. The Perlimian and the Hydean Way trade route were two of the most important and heavily trafficked hyperspace routes in the entire galaxy. The Perlimian ran galactic east and west from Coruscant all the way to Moncala. It intersected with most of the major hyperspace lanes and many of the minor ones. The Hydean Way ran galactic north and south. Together, these two major thoroughways handled a huge percentage of galactic traffic and only intersected at one point on the world of Bruntal 4. If it wasn't for that fact, this planet wouldn't even make our list of most populated planets with a population of just 65 billion. It actually has a lower population than the most populated Adoran planet of Geonosis, with 100 billion. Brentel 4 itself was quite unremarkable, a little smaller than Earth with a diameter of 11,242 kilometers. The planet had two massive polar caps that extended quite far from the northern and southern extremes, and a large equatorial desert covered the rest of the planet along with a few hot oceans. The planet ran from warm to temperate and the air was quite dry, perfect for storage. Most of the planet's available land was dominated by warehouses, transit depots, exchanges for traders. Basically everything here was about the facilitation of goods to every corner of the galaxy. There were probably more goods being stored here for transport than even on Coruscant, which was just a jump and skip down the Perlimian way. It's kind of like how the major sorting facilities for the distribution of goods in New York City is actually in Jersey. Its important location made it a strategic target for every major conflict from the New Sith Wars all the way to the Galactic Civil War. It was also a place where many famous meetings happened. For instance, a young Orson Krennic and Galen Erso would meet at the Republic Futures program established on the planet. Most Star Wars fans have heard of the world Corellia. Many of the most famous rogues and stars hail from this planet, like Han Solo, Kira, Wedge Antilles, and Koran Horn. There are also some not so famous rogues, like uh, Toro Calican. Corellians were known for being fiercely independent and very brave explorers. Corellia was one of the original planets in the core to be inhabited, most likely by former slaves of the long dead Infinite Empire. Krillians would play a huge role in exploring the galaxy and expanding galactic civilization. Unfortunately, Corellia, like many core word worlds, would become over-industrialized, fueling this expansion. And by the late Republic era, its population was quite small, roughly 3 billion or so. The Krillians weren't going extinct slowly. What was happening was so many were immigrating to other planets and colonizing new worlds. As a matter of fact, most of the worlds in the expansion and colonies areas could trace its roots back to Corellia somewhat. And a lot of these new were planets were quickly outpacing Corellia's growth. Like the planet of Lornar, which had a population ranging from 100 billion to 500 billion. We don't have much information about this planet exactly, but we do know that it was in an important location on the Corellian run hyperspace lane. And the Empire had a pretty large presence on it during its rule and would turn it into a fortress world during the Galactic Civil War. Biblos was a planet that was right next to the Lornar. It was also founded by Corellians. Both Biblos and Lornar were settled before the founding of the Old Republic. When the galaxy-wide government was established, both of these planets declared independence from Corellia, which was already in decline, and joined the Galactic Republic. Biblos, with a population of 164 billion, would become one of the most important worlds in the colony's region, and was home to many galactic corporations and had a very talented and skilled workforce. Large corpos like Blastech, Star Wars Sub, and Senior Fleet Systems would all have have a presence on this planet. Next up, we have the interesting world of Skako, and Eucumenopolis 
world located on the Hydean Way, just one stop from Brentel 4. This planet had a massive population of anywhere from 100 to 500 billion inhabitants, but very few of these individuals actually left this planet to visit, despite its prime location. And that's because Skako had a Type 4 atmosphere. Which meant that, like in early 2000 Abercrombie and Fitch stores, humans needed to wear pressurized environmental suits to not die from the toxic fumes. But this environment was paradise for the 100 to 500 billion Skakoans that lived on this dreary Cuminopolis, which most likely smelled like farts. Most species in the galaxy needed oxygen to breathe, they needed a Type 1 atmosphere. This meant that very few outsiders visited the world of Skakoa, and at the same time, it was very hard for Skakoans to leave their planet and find themselves in a comfortable environment. And so, unless the Skakoan is visiting specialized facilities like the famous Diplomat Hotel on Coruscant, they had to stay in their pressurized environmental suits even when they were sleeping. This meant that the Skakoans liked to keep to themselves and were quite xenophobic as a result. The only contact that they made with the rest of the galaxy was when it concerned their economic needs. With the rise of the Empire, due to the Skakoans' connections to the Techno Union via Watembor, aka Duty McFoddy Pants, Face. This meant that the Skakoans were blockaded and not allowed to emigrate off of their world, which didn't bother most Skakoans anyway. Navigating the Deep Core was as difficult as navigating the convoluted unknown regions. And that's because at the center of every galaxy, there's a cluster of gravitational anomalies, usually supermassive black holes, that basically kept everything from floating off into deep space in the two-dimensional disk galaxy. The Cuminopolis planet of Empress Tita was the gatekeeper of this region and home to one of the most ancient and wealthy human factions. In the early days of galactic expansion, huge mining operations on the planet would supply the builders of the first sleeper ships that would explore the colony's region of space. Eventually, the mining guild would also have a large presence on the planet. Empress Tita during the Imperial Era would play a huge role in guarding the Koro system and also the Deep Core. Emperor Palpatine would hide many secret projects in this part of the galaxy. Empress Tita's main urban sprawl known as Sinagar would eventually cover the entire planet and have a population close to 310 billion individuals. The planet of Denon was located on the intersection of the Hydean Way and the Corellian Run. Although not as important of a location as Bruntal, its excellent location and connection to the rest of the galaxy allowed the world to grow into a massive humanopolis. This is a planet with a proud and ancient history. Denon always sided with the Galactic Center, whether it was Coruscant during the Alsican Wars, the Old Republic against the Sith Empire, and the Galactic Republic versus the Confederacy. Denon always wanted strong central government and stability. And so when the Republic collapsed and turned into the Empire, Denon would remain extremely loyal to this new order and their planet would be turned into a fortress world as a result. While Coruscant was considered the nerve center of the galaxy and Alderaan was considered its heart, Arcania was considered its mind and brain. Or at least that's what the Arcanians said about themselves. I've literally never heard of anyone refer to this planet as anything else but an icy tundra full of pretentious weirdos who think that they're God's gift to the galaxy. The Arcanians were near humans who thought they were the pinnacle of evolution. The only thing that made them really different from normal humans was that they could see in the infrared spectrum, had white hair and eyes, and four fingers. Yeah, this is why we need to bring back bullying in the galaxy just a little bit. I mean, these dudes thought that they were so advanced that they started experimenting on their neighbors, the Yaka, who they viewed as a dim-witted species. They started enhancing them with cybernetic enhancements, and that basically erased all of their emotions. When the Galactic Empire rose to power, many Arcanian scientists started working with the Imperials to carry out all sorts of messed up genetic experiments and develop bioweapons. They're basically Kaminoans, but less dolphin-like. You know, with a rigid caste system and a fascination with blood purity. Actually, they give me like Targaryen sister and brother love vibes. Aside from their fascination with messed up genetic experiments, the planet of Arcania was rich with diamonds, which is how the planet became so wealthy. Sometimes life just isn't fair. Arcania has a population of 737 billion inhabitants. Metalos isn't on most galactic maps, and that's perhaps because the lettering for Coruscant covers where its location is. It's 
on its own little separate hyperspace route from Coruscant towards the west known as the Metalos trade route. It's kind of sad actually, Metalos was one of the first planets colonized by Coruscant's sleeper ships. A huge deal was made about opening new hyperspace lanes to the west of Coruscant, a new Perlimian way almost, but that unfortunately never manifested. And therefore Metalos became a dead end, a dreary planet covered in uninspired urban sprawl that was accented by 17 kilometer long strata blocks. Once the surface of the planet became too toxic and dirty to live on, they started building repulsor lift powered cities that floated above the sky. Thousands of them. They're kind of like Bespin's Cloud City, but a lot less nice. It should be noted that one planet that was connected to the west of Methylos was the Jedi world at Balom, where all Jedi younglings must go to retrieve their first kyber crystal for their lightsaber, although one had to use the force to navigate to get there. Because Methylos is so ancient and was one of the first settled worlds in the galaxy, it has a massive population of almost 900 billion inhabitants. Alsekin is probably one of the most important worlds in galactic history that you've never heard of. It's one of the core founding planets and located on the Perlimian trade route, just a few jumps from Coruscant. It wielded tremendous political power and challenged Coruscant no less than 17 times in open conflict in the earlier years of the Old Republic. The majority of the conflict revolved around two different ideologies focused on two different hyperspace lanes. The Alsekins and the Perlimian Way wanted limited interference and bureaucracy from Coruscant, whereas the other core planets and those in a region called the Spin wanted a more powerful central government that focused on economic development. Multiple Coruscant victories against the Alsekins guaranteed that the Republic's central government would grow in size and focus much more on galactic expansion. Had the Alsekins won, uh, I think the galaxy would have been far more decentralized, there would have been less economic growth and connection. But at the same time, there's a smaller chance that the concentration of power in the central government would lead to an abusive regime like the Empire. Ironically, the Alsekins, who were quite aristocratic and human-centric, would support the Empire fully during its reign. One could argue that Alsekins' desire for freedom from the central government wasn't just rooted in, you know, ideas of personal liberty. They just didn't want to share resources with alien worlds. All roads lead to Coruscant eventually, the most populated and best connected planet in the entire galaxy. With over 5,000 levels of urban sprawl covering every inch of the planet, aside from a mountain peak here or there, this was one of the most densely populated planets in the galaxy with a population estimated to be over 3 trillion inhabitants. Although I do have a theory that there are probably far more individuals living there than even that. If there's one place in the Star Wars galaxy that I could visit, it would definitely be here. So this video has taught me a pretty important lesson, and once again I'm going to use some basic economic knowledge here to um, explain what I've learned. So, do you know what companies have been the most successful over the last century that have grown the most. It's not fancy new companies like Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, or Google. Oftentimes, it's just companies that have stayed alive and are continuously operating for the longest time. Like Philip Morris, Boeing, believe it or not. A few railroad companies here and there. Which proves this point that sometimes in order to be the biggest, you don't have to be the best or the most innovative or have an amazing economy or culture. You just have to survive for a long enough time. Which is why all the most populated planets in the galaxy are just that. Old core worlds that were settled pretty early on in galactic history and fortunately escaped the major calamities and destruction that would have impeded their population growth. I think it's always important to remember that the time span in which we look at things really determines how we react to them. A company, a planet, and an idea can be popular and hot today, but the real question is, will it last? Will it have legs and continue to grow in the long run? Well, there you have it, guys. Those are the 10 most populated planets in the Star Wars galaxy. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy. I'll see you next time.